His successor, William Howard Taft, practiced the dollar diplomacy. In other words, instead of using bullets to get our way, we we'll use money, which is exactly what we're doing this time with Russia. Instead of using bullets, we're using the dollar to uh, try to get them to see things our way. Taft called it dollar diplomacy. But jumping ahead now to this chapter, President Franklin Roosevelt adopted a policy of good neighbor In other words, when there was trouble in Latin America, he would, instead of sending in the Marines, he would send an ambassador to try to oversee some kind of a negotiated settlement, to try to convince the people of Latin America, hey, we're one of you, we're all in this Western Hemisphere together. And I have to commend him for it because when the war broke out, no Latin American country was willing to let Germany use the, their, their country as a base of operations against the United States. And in both world wars, the United States went over there. We went overseas and we fought the Germans in Europe, fought the Japanese in Japan. But uh, neither the Japanese nor the Germans were able to get a Latin American country to agree to let the, any part of the Western Hemisphere be used as a base of operations in, the war, in their wars with the United States. And a lot of this might go to President Roosevelt's good neighbor policy. Um, Latin Americans depended on they, their exports. A lot of their exports, they exported things like coffee, tea, uh, chocolate, and uh, a lot of things that do not grow very well in the, the United States. They do in Latin America. And of course, they sometimes export oranges, bananas, not just food products, but tin, other metals um, that they have that the United States wants, aluminum, uh, concrete, and several other products the United States likes to have that uh, have enriched at least a few of the Latin Americans. Your book takes the countries in one at a time Argentina, Brazil. Um, your book doesn't have any much to say about them. I won't either, except that the one thing I want to remember about them both is they had trouble with democracies and they went from one dictator to another during this period of time. But Mexico, I do want to elaborate on just a little bit because a Mexican president did something that has been done several times throughout history. The Koreans did it. The uh, uh, Vietnamese have tried it. The Mexican president took the lands from the wealthy and redistributed these lands among the poor. Now, folk, it sounds like a great idea, perhaps. I mean, after all, what happens throughout history is a family will fall on hard times and have to sell its land to some wealthy neighbor. And after a while, your wealthy neighbors have all the land, and your ordinary people have none of it. In our country, now we tried to prevent that problem by having a special tax placed on land that a person's not using. In other words, if any of you who buy a house know that you've got to go to the house, you've got to go to the courthouse in a few days to get a homestead exemption. If you're living in the house you own, you pay a tax down here. If they find out you're not living in a house you own, your tax goes out of sight. Same with farmers. If you own a farm, you go to the courthouse and get a farmer's exemption, they'll tax you down here. If they find out that you're not farming the land that you own, they'll raise that tax so high you have all kinds of said, hey, get rid of that farm. Any of you have heard this? No, anything at all about what I'm talking about? Of course, you know, I'm talking to a city folk, I guess, and most, I mean, I, could, I grew up among a lot of country people, you might can tell. But anyway, um, we try to prevent a few wealthy landowners from gobbling up the land by these means. All right, back to Mexico. The Sumerians, way back yonder, had also practiced this practice of uh, taking the land from the rich and redistributing it. The Greek wise man Solon refused to do that. When the Greeks wanted him to take land and uh, just redistribute it, here's the problem with it. In short order, 
had gotten all of their land back that had been taken from them, and the poor people whom this president of Mexico had tried to help were even poorer than they had been before. How did they get their land back? Well, simply because, okay, that is an extremely good question. There were several means by which it happened. Most of it had to do with the persons who all of a sudden found themselves landowners who had been nothing but peasants, found they didn't know how to manage the land that they now own. And in effect lost it through bad management. And then the wealthy went ahead and quietly bought, bought it back at a greatly super low, low price. Folk, now I, I didn't, this did not set me favor when I said this in yesterday's class, I'm going to say it anyway to this class. One of the worst things that could happen to you in life is to win the lottery. I've had a few other, a few of my people who say they've heard this from other sources. You all of a sudden are a millionaire, and in short order, it's all gone. Now, they have ways to try to keep that from happening by you to take it in sums uh, here and there, but in a lot of cases, it leaves you quick, more quickly than it even came, or as quickly as it came. How? Yeah. How? Because, <laughs> like, you have to make a deal with, like, 100 million, that's it. You don't think you can spend 100 million. Most of the time, they lose it through such means as gambling, bad investments. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, investing in a futures market. And I told you, I say that about future, unless you are highly, highly skilled and trained in it. It makes a few people rich, just a few. But you can lose it really fast doing that. I mean, really, really fast. Um, also, relatives come in and they try to, oh, well, I, I can help this, my buddy out here, my buddy out there, and in short order, it's all gone. Um, but basically, the Mexican people who received the land, and this has happened all throughout history, folks, whether it be the Koreans, the Sumerians, and I say the ancient Greek wise man Solon, if you study ancient Greece, Greek history, you'll always remember this name Solon. It was something he refused to do. He said, I'm not taking the lands from the rich and giving to the poor. The poor can buy the lands if they can get enough money together to earn it. But just to outright hand it to them as a gift, in short order, it's gone. I mean, hey, we had people where our federal government would give housing to poor people and they'd wind up using their bathtub as a coal bin. All right, here in the south, we don't heat our homes with coal, but in the north, they heat a lot of their homes. They'd use their bathtub as a coal bin because, hey, you know, they didn't know, they didn't care what a bathtub was for. They never had one of those anyway before, so use it as a coal bin and uh, help keep your house warm. Uh, tell the man who's living in the coal, hey, put it here. Open up the window and have him shovel it in the coal bin. Uh, this, I mean, is an example, folks. Uh, bad management, bad, uh, again, simply not knowing how to handle the newly found wealth you just had. So if you ever do win a lot or anything, be really careful. Um, the money can go away as fast as it comes in. All right. 